I could get behind Skyland. The people are amazing, very friendly, really great to get along with. They're not an attractive people. I can say that as someone with a lot of Scottish ancestry. We're not an attractive people. I'm not Scottish, but you know what I mean. But they are wonderful. The food is amazing. It's not English food. It actually has taste in it. And the geography is incredible. Yeah, no, Scotland would be pretty good. Best food is human food. I mean, you're right. You hate American drivers? Dude, American drivers are fucking cool. Oh, God. <laughs> Deep fried oil crumbs. <laughs> Scottish geography sucks. That's just not true. That, that is objectively not true. Scotland is beautiful, man. It is amazing. Uh, the Isle of Skye is probably my favorite place I've ever been on Earth. I've done a lot of traveling in my life. I've just seen a lot of really beautiful things in beautiful places. And Isle of Skye and Northern Scotland are definitely at the top of my list. Besides probably the Himalayas. Deep fried bread. Deep fried bread is actually not bad. That's a real food. I live in Wisconsin. The drivers up here come from Chicago. Oh, fuck that. Chicago drivers are pretty bad. Dude, you know you know what that can't compete with? LA drivers. I've never lived in LA and I never want to. LA drivers are... They're all, I swear, just doing lines of cocaine and just filled with rage. That's all it is. For not getting the latest TV role that they moved to Hollywood to get. Play the Sky Boat Song. No. Nepal. Nepal is up there too. Nepal's people are so kind and nice and helpful and just really good people and tough. My god, they're tough. Uh, the food is fucking incredible. The geography is incredible. Yeah, I'd say Scotland or Nepal. Scotland or Nepal would probably be my final answers. Lock them in the board. Final, 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 final answers. Tie between Scotland and Nepal. God, I, I want to go back to Nepal, man. I was there for a month. So good. The, the, uh, the Niagara Falls level of diarrhea and, and, and stomach sicknesses due to the fucking bugs there could not take away from just the wonderful, wonderful nature of that country. Goddamn. I got sick so bad. It was probably the most sick I've been in my life. But it was worth it. And I know what I got it from. I had, uh, I had these fried, uh, fried water buffalo momos from a very sketchy place my buddy told me was good when it wasn't. Well, it was delicious. I actually, if I went back, would I eat those again knowing what would happen? Maybe, they were very good. Top 10 food I've ever had. It was a high cost to pay though, fuck. All right, we dropped around eight players, nice, that'll help. I live in Spain and currently the uh, day of most of pop lives in the coastal regions around 80 to 90%. Yeah, I mean, it's way more temperate, it's way nicer. Spain is lovely. I love the geography. The food is also incredible. The problem is, I mean, no offense to Spanish people, the culture with men in Spain is pretty fucking gross. It's pretty fucking gross. I've known enough Spanish women and been friends with enough Spanish women to, to, to have a very deep dislike for that culture. Where's your trousers? Bullfighting too. That's sad. The only way to... Marxism. Donald wears your trousers. Swiss chocolate, also delicious. New question. Oh boy. We're playing a hundred questions while we pray to the paradox gods this game actually works. Worst country is the worst people, worst countryside, and the worst food. My first instinct is to say French, but their food isn't bad and their geography is beautiful. Really, I just hate Parisians. The rest of the French are actually very nice. The United Arab Emirates, lock it in the board. Final answer. The United Arab Emirates is in a hellhole of a country. Their people are just so fucking bad. Their food is okay. UAE, final answer. Maybe 
Yeah, you are. My dad's Northern Irish, so I'm uh, contractually obligated to say English. So I can get some louder music here too. Also, I just realized the music I'm playing might get my stuff blocked on YouTube, so I'm gonna go play the Vicky Three playlist just to be safe. I had that happen before I edited around something. Suck. All right, do we have a game? Maybe. Don't knock Swedish meatballs. A meatball, a spicy. A meatball. Alright. Praise. Paradox, please work. I wonder if Vikings were always so pissed. I'd be pissed too if I had to eat Scandinavian food. <laughs> Dude, I, I don't know if I've had Scandinavian food. I've had Swedish meatballs. They're not they're not bad. They're okay. Um I'm trying to think of any other Scandinavian food I've had that I can think of. I've never eaten a raw lamb skull, so that, that's one thing I haven't eaten. I've never pickled a fish, left it in the sun for a year, and eaten that, so that's another thing I haven't done. Um, hmm. Reindeer. I bet reindeer tastes pretty good. Dude, I love venison. I love venison so much. Oh. Venison is probably one of my favorite foods. Oh my god, so good. And I bet reindeer tastes kind of similar. Maybe tougher, I'd say. Reindeers are, are bigger. They tend to be more muscular, especially due to where they're at. Leaner. It'd probably be a tougher meat, but I bet the taste would be kind of in the same ballpark. I bet it'd be pretty good. Venison is the best. Moose? I've never had moose actually, so I can't say. You hate getting up to go hunting? Fuck. Oh, fresh venison. Oof. Go hunting? Do you hunt a lot, Arthur? Where are you from, man? If you don't mind me asking. Rudolph, he was delicious. <laughs> the red nose was actually a cherry the hunter put on him before eating him, so yeah. Why is my music not playing? Oh, I see the problem. There we go. I have like three different volume settings I've decided to put on here. It makes streaming shit, but it makes other things easier. My brother hunts deer and makes moonshine. Fucking cool. From East Texas, I spent my Christmas and summers in uh, uh, Country Down and I. Fuck is in I Nebraska? Hold on, I'll find this myself. Oh, New Jersey. Hmm. Oh, Northern Ireland. I see. Hell yeah, nice. Oh, that's a good place to spend the summer, man. God damn. Hell yeah, dude. That's cool. Oh, we're going. We're going! Fuck, 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 fuck. I wasn't ready. Um. Oh. Fuck. He got traditionalist commander. That's a good and a bad thing. Mostly a bad thing. I'm going to try something even more radical.
We got so unlucky with our fucking interest rolls. That's really sad. Fuck. Mobilizing. Tuna's good? Oh, dude, I can't stand Tuna. It smells so fucking bad. Cuba actually sitting there, people. I bet the Cuban player decided to dip. I do not blame him. It's been two hours. Yeah, the Cuba player did dip, meaning we have to fight the Cuba player. Or sorry, the Cuban country. The nation. Yeah, we're going to struggle so hard for arms here. We have all our arm industries stacked on Navara because I think the uh, VFM devs did that, but there's no uh, there's no infrastructure there, so it's basically useless. Let me try something. It sucks that we have to do this, but uh, it won't help. Manufacturing industries we want. Infrastructure Navara, big. And then urban services. No, it is manufacturing. That'll help a little bit with our output. Microscopic amounts. Okay. Did they go for guns? They're not pushing, so I think they did. I bet they're upgrading. No, they didn't. If we can get guns, if we can get ammunition, we might be able to do something here. I'm not even going to go bother to do Diplo to try and get his stuff until I know that this is working, though. So we'll wait a little while longer. I really think all we needed here, though, from the beginning was we just needed to rehost and do a different save. Like, that's, I think, what killed us, but we'll see. So we can do, is there anything we can use to increase income, decrease costs here? Not much. Oh, we just lack so much stuff. God, look at the profit profit the the French are making on these guns they're sending us. Oh. Uh-oh. Well, they're not very profitable.
How's the mobilization? I really want to push. No, we're at 67. We got to wait. I really want them to push us so we can counterattack too. Yep, here they go. They're going. They're looking for a battle right now. He's cruel. That's actually really good for us. Look at that defense we've got. Huge. They will not push us like this. If we can keep these arms flows in here, we will may do all right. We need to let them basically push us repeatedly, lose a bunch of equipment and men, and uh, lose all their morale, and then we can counter push. Like I said, this will be a very hard war to win. We got very lucky though, again, because the AI didn't rush us. If the AI rushes us, that's how they actually can do very well here. money so hard this is gonna destroy our standard of living but it doesn't matter we just have to win the war Here's some guerrillas. This is pretty much Arthur uh, Wolseley's Iberian strategy. Yep. I mean, the Spanish know well at this point how to do guerrilla warfare. And that's exactly what the Carlos are doing, and that's exactly what we're doing. Spain is damaging relations. <laughs> Color me shocked. All right. We, we are routing them here. We are also routing them here, even without a secondary general, which we can't afford to have at the moment. Almost mobilized. I'm, I want them to do one more offensive push on us. I want us to fully mobilize, and then I'm going to try a push. We have to get that. And then we can snowball if we were really lucky. We need those arms, and we need them so bad. This is looking good. Turn this music down. <laughs> What's up, Tall? What's up, Condor? Good victories. Come on, I hope. Come on, push again. Push again. Getting closer to professional army. We're up to 30%. That's also really big. Why is our attrition so high? Uh, from commander divided by supply. 5% comes commander cruel, maybe? No. He got explorer. That's not very useful. We rolled bad on that trait. How are we on mobilization? 97%. Fuck. We were getting guns and we're not getting them anymore. Inactive. Beautiful. Ah, uh, because we're getting raided. He's still got three armies that are full. Arrogant Surveyor. It will be close. We got to make something happen here. All 
All right, this battle will dictate the war more or less. Who fought in the VFM team? It was a good idea to stack all the arms industries on one place where there's no infrastructure. Oof. Isn't five percent the minimum? Is it? To be fair, I've never hyper obsessed over these tactics like this before. With these statistics. Oh, we have the advantage. Big, poor visibility. Oh, we rolled a blunder, but he rolled poor visibility. He actually managed to roll a worse a worse thing than us. That is so lucky. Man, if we get professional army, we have a shot here. We've actually killed more too. Oh, this is this is big. Was the game ended? Uh, an hour and a half. We only have an hour and a half to go. Ended at normal time. That's up to the GC. If the GC wants to let it go past normal time, I'm fine with it. But we'll see who actually can and can't do it. The main issue is a lot of people have to go to bed here in Europe who are in this game, so it's not really fair to keep a game going late. As an American, it's easy to be like, yeah, let's play late. But as a European, it's like, you know, it's ridiculously late. Oh, big. His defense is going up though. What do I need to look at? Okay, I'm gonna look at him. Catalonia, Occitania. That's like no Castile. He's just from all over, isn't he? Navarra, Aragon, Carlos Revolt. He's got some from Old Castile, too. We are gonna win this battle. They ran out of soldiers before they ran out of uh, morale. Now, I I was ranting about a Hoi Four ideology earlier, so there I think there are some debates of ideology going on in chat right now. Fuck, we're getting raided so hard. We have the artillery we need. That's really big. Come on. Gotta go quicker here. We need better rolls. We're just not rolling good. How do you get the Carlos Revolt? It's in the VFM mod that we're using. Oh, look at that. That's huge. Look at that. We are on the doorstep of Madrid right now. How are we looking on supplies? Acceptable. We need a good roll here. Come on. Come on. Jose Ramon Radil, I believe. Bit of devastation. Our country will be so fucked after this war. All right, we're going to get another battle here. Oh, this doesn't look good. Oh, this is close. We're pretty evenly matched here. We do have the offensive advantage. Oh, we roll logistics secured and he rolled mud. This is this is big. That's big. We'll we'll maintain the morale. Oh, yeah, come on. I'd really like to get muskets. If we got muskets, it, it would it would win us this war. I'm gonna, I can't I can't change, though, in the middle of a battle. It will fuck us. If we slow down, I'll switch to them. 
But if we just keep this rolling, there's no reason to stop here. The forces of Infante Carlos are advancing towards Madrid. This is literally a battle of the battle for Madrid. Holy fuck, we're taking the capital. Come on! So big. This historically is where they lost. They got right up to Madrid like this historically, and they won a battle, and then their troops dispersed, and then they lost uh, control of them, and then they got pushed back. Come on. Oh, his defense is creeping up. Fuck, I don't like that. We got to get them on the back foot with no more low morale and just keep going. But we're losing our own morale pretty quick here. Because he's got four fresh commanders. I'm putting everything on one. I'm literally just throwing a Hail Mary right now, which is the only shot we have to win this war. Oh, look at that morale just jump the fuck up. He has support. He has other commanders he can take stuff from. We don't. It's all or nothing. Come on. Exhausted. Good. Blunder. God damn it. We can't afford to be losing men like this either. They have to get trained though. That's the problem. We'll run out of like actual good soldiers. Exhausted. Yep. Come on. He's got the morale, but he's out of soldiers. Greetings. Hello there. I am the ambassador from uh, the Kingdom of France. Welcome we to the uh, the Battle of Madrid. We are currently engaged in a battle. What can I do for you, Ambassador? Well, as you are apparently winning, we just want to tell you we have no bad intentions towards you. Um, just could you please spare the royal family? Um, of course. Is Isabella is my niece. I have no harm against her. My issue is with the wife of my brother. The liberal from Sicily. Her I can make no promises for, but of my niece, who is nothing but a, uh, a young girl being taken advantage of, I have nothing but good intentions for, I assure you. The thing is, I want to cooperate with you in the long term, but we need to be on the same page, and if you're too infamous, I won't be able to do so. I've said it before, I have no intentions towards my own family at all. I'm in other states, I wasn't. How do you mean? Your general foreign policy. I won't accept if it's too much infamous. You mean as in if we're just rapidly expanding in the sorts of things? Ambassador, yeah. we, we have yet to even win in Iberia. Such things are, are far in the future. Okay, just to let you know. Um, I'm gonna start broccoling you so that you can rebuild your country. That would be very appreciated. We're, we're glad to see that the French uh, will, will be aiding us. So yes, just uh, if you if you want us to cooperate, you just need to tell me when you want uh, to do, let's say, important uh, foreign policies uh, or expansion. Of course, we'll make you very well known. As as I've said in my letter to the king, I I want a good working relationship with the French if we work together. Uh, many, especially the liberals, have tried to paint me as some extreme radical. I can assure you, I am not. I represent the staunch interests of the royal family of Spain. Traditionalism and history come first to me. I, I am no radical. Yes, that's perfect, then. We just didn't want it to be too much involved because we don't want to appear more infamous, but you have also thought so. No. We, we, if anything... Uh, how can we be infamous? We've lost half our territory in the world and we've been beset by civil wars and invasions in the past. There's nothing that makes us infamous. Yes, but, uh, you know, it's more about the uh, UK. They saw the, the government you're fighting as the legitimate ruler. Of course, they want a puppet state in Spain. Something I'm sure that you and your government do not seek. So, yes, 
just to let me know. We will. I can promise you I will be taking no radical action against anyone, let alone the British. Already they have thrown my empire and my nation asunder. I will not put us into the fire again. Okay, that's great. Uh, I might need to come back to Paris. Very well. Thank you, Ambassador. Get the Basques, like I said, the Carlos. Yeah, but the Basques are wonderful. We're winning another battle, too. We're really pushing here. Oh, my gosh. I want to reiterate, I did three runs last night. I lost in all three of them. And it's not like we're getting incredible support from players, either. Like, we just got bankrolled by the French, which is huge. But up until now, we weren't. Like, we just got lucky. You know what it was? Is I did the decrees. I didn't do that previously. The, the military training program decrees are huge. Because they make your military better. We're getting run ragged here, but... Oh, man. I might need to slow down in a minute. I don't want to. We really can't slow down, but we need to. Here we go. The last of the defenders. Our economy is actually stabilized. God, our country will be so war turned. There we go. Big. Yeah, we got to keep going here. How are we looking? Can we offer terms yet? No, nope, it's going to be absolute. We have to take everything or we lose. They still have n almost no war support. Yeah, it won't let us uh, offer a peace deal to them. No revolutions. We have to take everything. Another battle. We're outnumbered, but our troops are better. The Battle of Old Castile. I'm worried about our morale. Careful maneuver. Good. That's big. This general is going to become a national hero. General Jose Ramon Radil. If I can, I may make him our prime minister. I don't know if we can set that with VFM, but this man deserves everything. <laughs> Yeah, this is getting rough here. We're losing morale quick. He got reinforcements. And they're good reinforcements. Uh-oh, we're not going to win this battle. Our first loss of the war, I think. Don Jose Ramon Rodil was a member of the liberal faction. Was he really? There was one who like switched sides though to the Carlos, like who was liberal historically, but then he worked with the Carlos. I don't know if it was him or someone else. I remember reading about that. Now we're going to lose this. All right, I'm going to go into the defensive position and I'm going to try and get us muskets. We need to just hold what we have. We still actually killed more and demoralized about the same though. Their morale damage is what's really hurting us. Yeah, we just, we just ruled bad. Nothing nothing to it other than that. 
He was PM for a little bit, I think. Oh man, rough way to go here. We make it a historical Carlos Civil War where we um, like we take all this land and get pushed back. Ugh. Gotta immediately go to defensive. He's somehow disliked too. Well, okay, he is cruel, that's fair. Traveling to front. Oh no, okay, there it is. They're gonna go on the offensive here. We're gonna have to hold them. I think. Yes, they are. We need to win this next battle. Or we're really gonna lose all our momentum and all of our territory we've occupied. Can I? I can't subsidize anything, can I? Nope. What if I only support it produced? We won! Oh my god, we won! Holy fuck, we won! I walked into today thinking we were going to lose. I'm going to be honest. Oh my god, we actually won it. That is so huge. That is so fucking huge. Oh my god. Yeah, hey, hey, take a second here. Holy shit. I didn't expect that. Right? We're in charge now. We've won. We have successfully pushed out the upstart and restored the conservative values. The first law we will, of course, implement is the return of the Salic laws to make sure that in the future, only men may inherit. God intended for men to rule, and by him, I will see it so. All right, well, let's look at our country, and then we gotta go do some Diplo. Landowners are in control. The Catholic Church, very, very powerful. Let's bring the armed forces into our government, too. I'll take that little hit, it's fine. Uh, we'll make a government of armed forces, the church, and landowners. Um, so yeah, we're an expert political operator. We are ambitious, of course, when we are traditionalist, which is entirely accurate. We're in very good shape. The first thing we need to do is pass colonialism, because we don't start with it. We should start with it. We don't. Let's see which is the one we want. We want colonial resettlement, so we'll get to work on that. Because, again, Spain has colonies. It should have colonial laws. It doesn't start with them for some reason. So we'll work on that right now. Budget-wise, we need to start balancing. My god, we need to start balancing. What is the issue here? Costs primarily come from government wages, goods from military buildings, primarily paper. All right, now I have to do the eco shit. I did choose a little bit of a rough start for us here, not going to lie. We have all the bureaucracy we need for some good trade routes, too, so let's get to work on those. Import iron. We didn't get any of the starting trade routes, too, so we are at a huge disadvantage. Luxury clothing from the Ottomans. We need a fuck ton of wood. We'll import that from the Ottomans, the French, and the Austrians. I'm going to offer the French a trade deal, so he said he wanted to work with us. We'll see if he accepts. Greetings, uh, King Carlos of Spain. Hello there. I am here representing the Sublime Porte, and I uh, just wish to formally congratulate you for your victory over the uh, liberals in your recent uh, internal conflict. I thank you very much. Liberalism is a disease that has spread into the heart of Europe. Thankfully, we have, through God's grace, been able to destroy it here, and we hope to do so elsewhere. I thank you for your words and the sentiment. Yes, I uh, hope that your uh, I hope that to uh, future cooperation in the Mediterranean uh, at some point, and uh, I wish you good luck in your uh, new reign. Thank you. That is all. Farewell. Farewell. 
I will declare interest in... Nope, that's not the right one. I want... Oh, what did I do? Oh, wait, okay, we're back at three again. Um, spending. Balanced, let's go up on construction. We're not building, are we? We shouldn't be. We're building, I guess, the iron mine. When that's done, we'll be good for the moment. Paper is the big one. We need fucking paper. Dutch, Ching, and British. We'll just take whatever gets us. I can fix these when we run out of bureaucracy. For now, we just need to stop the bleeding here. Uh, furniture, so we don't have, like, only poor people. Porcelain, for the same reason. Explosives for military facilities. Tools. Uh, not many people to import from there. We'll import more iron. That's the big one. We'll get to work on building tool factories as well. We're going to need those. There's no way around that. Okay, we'll go in East Andalusia. We'll build four. No, we'll build three to start. Wood, we need more. We've got routes. Let's open one with a few other people too, just to keep those flowing in. Furniture, we will need a lot of. We'll import it from the French. Whatever surplus of, we'll start our exports too. Fuck tons of sugar. Let's start exporting that. Austria and France. Tobacco. We'll go to... The French and the Dutch. Everything else we don't have a very big surplus of, so we uh, do that. Do we have any colonies still left in the game or did they all leave? Let's look. Hello there. Can you turn your mic up at all? Mm, yeah. Can you hear me clear? Uh, hi Not really. All right. Um... I have you at 200 as well. Oh no. Alright, how about now? No difference at all. Input volume. My input volume is 100. I'm so sad. Okay. I, I, I'll just have to listen very closely. Go ahead. Uh, Alright, so basically, um, I am um, for Chancellor and Foreign Minister Prince Clemens von Metternich of the Austrian Empire here, uh, sending, uh, personally giving you this letter. Uh, from, uh, written by my Emperor Ferdinand from Habsburg. He wishes to personally congratulate you on your victory and ascension to the Spanish throne. Uh, we, uh, he remembers your letter and uh, hopes that uh, our shipments of uh, weapons were useful. Yeah, although they were not many, the arms that you provided were instrumental in arming the army of true Spain in their victories in Madrid and elsewhere. Uh, Please send my formal thanks to the Kaiser. Austria has themselves a close friend with Spain. Our, our countries have a very long history together, and we were very, very thankful for your generous uh, support during this civil war. Our intention is to rebuild here, and when we are done, we are seeking to be able to help the other nations who understand the old system to uphold conservative values in Europe. Uh, please relay that to the Kaiser. Most definitely. Um, the Kaiser, uh, yes, uh, we can definitely do that. Uh, we, our relations as Catholic uh, nations and part of the Holy Alliance is paramount to uh, the maintenance of conservatism and the monarchy in Europe, and therefore uh, we are happy and uh, that we our two our two great nations can work closely together. Um, is there anything that you would like to speak about uh, uh, foreign diplomacy with Austria as for the time being? We would like to ascertain your general position on the United Kingdom. Oh, okay. Well, um, on, um, I, as the foreign minister, can uh, tell you that for now we have nothing to do with the uh, United Kingdom, uh, whether it be hostile or friendly. Uh, they haven't intervened in us, neither have we with them. Why do you ask? Uh, well, to put it very frankly, it is the United Kingdom that has seen our, our empire born asunder. Not long ago, I'm sure your country and you remember, as you were old enough, I believe, 
to remember when Spain was an empire and our reach spread throughout the world. As far as I see it, and the Spanish people see it, this was entirely due to the actions of the British, who supported the revolts of our colonies in the New World and elsewhere. We're just generally trying to ascertain the position of European powers, as we're quite curious about the maintenance of the balance of power. As far as we see it, the United Kingdom has undone the balance by their actions and destroyed a major power, and we're just see curious to see what Austria's general opinion on this has been. Well, uh, the balance of power is uh, the most important part of uh, the uh, of Europe, and we wish to keep uh, to maintain it. Uh, so, anything that they may wish to do uh, that can uh, upset that, uh, we will definitely uh, vehemently oppose that. Of course, but m my issue is that, as far as I see it, and and we wish to make this clear, is the balance of power has already been broken. One of the major balancers of the power was Spain up until now. And with Britain's actions in breaking them, they never declared formal war on us. In fact, they supported us against the French. But despite this, they have destroyed a great power and as such completely upset the balance of power. And we are curious to see if countries are planning to just let this go as it is and allow them to, to take on the influence in all of Spain's territories, essentially consume another great power, or if there's any interest in supporting Spain in being able to to rebalance the board, so to speak. I see, I We're not see. seeking conflict with Britain. Let me clarify. They are a great power, and we have no interest in that. My issue is, uh, my thought is more to seek diplomatic support in the rebuilding of Spain's power so that we can, again, as I said, put the pieces back on the board and balance it correctly. Hmm. Uh, to have an ally in the in Western Europe, uh, or, or to at least have a counterbalance to uh, the two great powers uh, that is the United Kingdom and France, which are both um, um, uh, pra practice grounds of democracy. I believe that uh, uh, the, uh, as, as a part of the Holy Alliance, we can definitely give you uh, support uh, to, uh, of your side, if any, uh, to uh, expand the Sp Spain's influence. Oh my god, I'm getting a fucking long. revolution. <laughs> For no colonial affairs? Are you fucking kidding me? Hilarious. Worst fucking Spain. What the fuck? Spain. Sorry, go on. Yeah, to, um, to, uh, but of course, if it were, to, uh, we will warn you that if anything were to be too uh, one-sided, of uh, we will not uh, support you, of course. No, and as I said, my, my country is in need of generations of rebuilding. But we wish to have this facilitated. We In the future, I may seek to bring old holdings back into Spain's um, sphere. And we just want a general diplomatic support from the Holy Alliance and other great powers of Europe to, to ensure that Britain does not take formal action. In the past, they have debilitated my nation indirectly. And we want to make sure that there's support to stop them from, if, for example, we try and take back which they've taken from us that uh, if they declare a direct war and are honest about their intentions, which is to consume the remnants of a power, uh, that there is just some support in place to stop them from doing that. I see, I see. Well, um, I can give you this. Uh, I will speak with the other members of the Holy Alliance and see what they can do. Uh, of course. Currently, the, uh, I will inform you between the two of us that the Russians are seeking favor from the British uh, in their, um, uh, while eyeing the Ottomans, um, especially mm. as France is, uh, uh, uh opposing, uh, Russian expansion, um, uh, even if the Russians don't understand it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, if, uh, if that is the case, yes, I will speak with Prussia and Russia. I That's good to hear. Italian. As I said, I want to reiterate, I am not innately opposed to the British. I remember well their aid that allowed us to push back the French. It's not like... This is some great hatred, but I'm not a stupid man. My country is not a stupid nation. We know well what has happened, and we wish to have us be made whole again. I understand. And and uh, and we will speak with the best of the Holy Alliance. But I thank you for that. You no, of course not. I have no expectations. I just hope that the Holy Alliance understands this for what it is. See, is another conservative power in Western Europe seeking to bring some measure of influence back to itself to uphold the system that you all are very much in favor of as well. Mm -hmm. uh, how about this? 
uh, to ease your uh, uh, growth, um, uh, what if we sign a trade agreement? An economic partnership can help between our two great powers and uh, uh, hopefully will bring back the counterbalance that is needed. We, we'd be very agreeable to that. We, we need trade partners as all of our old routes and our old uh, systems for trade and, and goods are gone with our current system. And we'd be happy to, to cooperate with Austria. As I said, we will never forget what you've done for us in the Civil War. Right then, well, I must return uh, uh, to Wien quickly, and uh, and uh, and send this letter to the emperor as fast. Very well, thank you, ambassador. Uh, uh, you too. And our buildings are going so slowly here. We got to figure out how to stop the bleeding on our budget, though. That's the big issue. Hello, Buenos dias. Here's. Uh... He's the ambassador of Denmark. Ambassador, what can I do for you? The Kingdom of Denmark would like to officially congratulate your government for your win and success in the Civil War. We thank you. It was a hard-fought battle, but with God on our side, anything is possible. Yes, we would. I mean, we watched it very interested, and we are happy to see that you won, your majesty. Of course. The Kingdom of Denmark would like to expand and increase our relations in the future, our diplomatic relations, as well as uh, with the possibility to sign a trade agreement. I mean, no disrespect here. We're happy to have good relations with Denmark, but you, your, your markets and, and your goods bring no great measure to bear. We're happy to trade with your traders, of course, at all times, but a trade agreement is a very major deal to make. And at this time, I certainly see no reason that would suggest that that would be beneficial for Spain. Uh, we, I mean, no offense. I'm happy to cooperate with your nation, but it it does us no no yes, great uh, good. We understand, but uh, you must understand. I need to rebuild my country, and I have to be very uh, realistic about what I I can and can't do here economically. You understand? I understand. Yes. It's good to well, hear. Perhaps in future then. Perhaps, if, if the economy of Denmark grows, or we grow back to our formal strength when such a thing uh, is, is less of an issue. I would be happy to send a diplomat to your court and station him there permanently, though, so we can have uh, more direct correspondence. Oh, that's beautiful. We can certainly agree on that. Good. I'm very glad to hear right, that. Then we will stay in contact. Goodbye. Thank you for your time. So we only have the influence to do a couple of these deals. So we have to be very careful of who we do trade agreements with and things like that. Because we don't have a ton of influence. Which is my, my big worry here. Okay. I don't know why. Is our... Please tell me I didn't do it. No, it's going. It's just really slow, I guess. Alright, because it's weeks. I always forget how slow Vicky 3 uh, growth is in the beginning. <laughs> oh, man. Let's... Okay, we'll still do a few things here. We're going to stop our military decrees. We will... Hmm, will this authority... Enactment time going quicker would be nice, but there's more things we need to do. I'm going to put construction on... Where are we making those? Iron mines and old Castile. We'll put a decree on there. Efficient administration in New Castile, in Catalonia, and then we'll do... Where's the majority of our industry at? Very spread out. That's unfortunate. Will our trade routes go through Catalonia? We'll encourage urban services in Catalonia too, which will decrease, uh, increase the efficiency of our trade routes there. If I remember correctly, that actually works. Yep, 
Yes, it does. Alrighty. Can I mark it again? I want to go do Diplo, but we gotta we gotta get our country running here, and it is not doing that. Are you hiring a diplomat at the moment? No, I can go do it. I just there's nothing we can really ask for until we build up a bit. We just can't get the goods we need. Maybe I need to change my declared interests. No, we'll have to make our own paper. So let me explain why we're getting fucked on trade here. The way trade works, and I, I do like the system mostly, one problem I don't like with it is, the longer the trade routes go, the less of a chance AI or countries are to make new ones. There's a lot of players, so a lot of that's uh, offset. But basically, if you have a trade route going for like a period of time, it becomes harder and harder to offset that good and offset their willingness to trade with our people and like uh, push goods to other people. So basically, like the first people to set up their routes with other people will just dominate them essentially. It's more or less how it works from my understanding. So that means since we got into the trade game really late, we're going to kind of just have to pick up the scraps, more or less. Our navy is also very expensive. That does not help. I might have to mothball it. That's fucking painful. We need more iron so, 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 so badly. But there's no one to buy it off of because everyone else's navy also costs iron now, which is one of the things I added with the naval changes. So we might just have to downgrade our navy. This is physically painful, but... Let's try to think how I can balance our budget here. The government's attempts to pass colonial exploitation law has brought the ethics of colonialism to the forefront of debate. It is morally correct. And it failed. We lost the debate. <laughs> Alright, no colonialism yet. That is really bad. Greetings. Is there any way you can fix your mic? Any better? A little bit. Hello there. Hello there. This is the Russian ambassador in Madrid. Ah, hello, ambassador. What can I do for you? First, I would like to, to congratulate you to King Carlos uh, about his victory over the the Ansapers in Madrid. I thank you. A hard-fought war, but uh, in the end, we were victorious. I hope uh, that's for better between sent to you during your fight uh, from the well. Uh, we did not receive any reply uh, from you, but I hope that the ammunition and the guns which the SAR personally sent to you was put in good use. It was indeed. We, we do thank you for the military arms. Thank you very much. Well, uh, we are just here to first of all to, to congratulate you, as I said, and to, to, to make an official diplomatic channels between our two great nations. We do view the Russians as natural friends, as, again, uh, li liberalism is one of the primary things I fear uh, in this country, uh, in the world right now. And we know that Russia is a very staunch conservative nation in uh, a barrier to the growing tide of, of liberalism. So we view you as a natural ally, a natural country to work with to stop this. And we hope uh, you see things in a similar light. We are here, there, the Russians are see exactly like you uh we need more precision your mic is so bad man like i'm really cannot hear much what you're saying let me try and fix some of my stuff all right one more time how about now oh, a little bit better it's just rough all right sorry uh can you say it again so the the Russian Tsar uh, see just uh, like King Carlos, and uh, we need more voices uh, like us in Europe, especially against the, the growing threat of liberalism in Central Europe and France. So maybe we wholeheartedly agree with the rule of hundred. Absolutely, uh, we're fully agreed. 
Thank you very much. You don't want to bother to anyone. We just really want to congratulate. Uh, and I thank you for the congratulations. And again, we thank you again for your support in the war and the Holy Alliance's uh, uh, support. It's very welcome. So, uh, have a great day. You as well. Thank you. I feel bad. I just I couldn't hear him. There's just too much static in his mic. Was that just me? Like, oh man, I, I couldn't hear a thing. <laughs> Every other word. Um. Okay, we'll get rid of grocery taxes. Maybe a grain. Oh god, that would hurt us so much though. We have to build some manner of standard of living here. We'll stop our arms in ports? What the fuck was that? Okay, there. I think. Did I just cancel all my trade routes? I can't tell. I hope not. Okay. Try importing. Because oh, I switched markets. It looks like we're gonna have to do a lot of trading with the Ching. About the only ones who can meet our demands here. It's not like vanilla. In vanilla, there'll be like a healthy amount of goods still available for trade for countries because they're not maximizing things. But players min-max like all their goods, which is efficiently, which is what you should do, right? So it's just so much harder to get excesses of things. Like trade in multiplayer is so much different than trade in single player. It's actually kind of crazy. No one wants sugar at all. Why the hell is that? Tools we can get. Buy a bit more porcelain. It's the wood we really need. If I prioritize some of these trade routes with AI, they'll build their economies around them, which is big. Especially for wood. Sure was like one of the most valuable in the markets back then. Yep. Alright, iron prices have stabilized a bit. That's good. We're still just hemorrhaging money. We gotta delete some of the governmental administrations. That's what this is. I really would have liked to avoid doing that. We're gonna have to go to simple organization here. Saves us the money on paper. And then we can put them back up when needed. Spain is just in a very bad position in the beginning, too. It's also as simple as that. Trawlers, good, we can do that.
Greetings, Carlos. Hello. This is uh, Frederick the Third from Prussia, and we'd like to congratulate you on your victory in the uh, the conflict um, with Isabella and your uh, ability to uh, keep Spain a conservative and traditionalist monarchy. Thank you, Ambassador. I uh, appreciate your words. I also would like to formally thank you and your government for the arms shipments given to us during the war, which were instrumental in uh, supplying our forces in the Pyrenees before the great push to Madrid. Uh, so you have our, our, our deep thanks for this. Yeah, we could not see the boys, uh, the Prussian boys who went down there to uh, expand their military resumes, uh, be not properly equipped. So we made sure that you guys were... Of course. Also the, uh, the, the the Prussian officers were, were very useful in getting the uh, conscripts of Spain. They did not lack of enthusiasm, but they certainly lacked in military prowess, and the officers who chose to fight with us did much. So, you also have our thanks for that. Good to know, and we would like to know if we could potentially further um, the relations between uh, the Spanish government and uh, Prussia, as we see um, your government and your values are much more aligned with the conservative monarchies of uh, of Prussia and uh, other like like uh, alike monarchies. Any conservative nation is one that we would be happy to work with. Our economy is very much in need of rebuilding. We would be very interested in. Oh my God, your modifiers. Uh, with with a closer trading ties with Prussia. We know you are a mercantilist economy, but in their process of uh, reforming, I believe. But there are many goods in Prussia that uh, that could be in Spain. And we have access to a plethora of goods in the New World, such as sugar and coffee, which I'm sure your nation is in need of. Yes, very much, as we are trying to expand um, many uh, manufacturing industries at this uh, very critical moment. I, um, would you be interested in pursuing closer economic ties? A good way, perhaps, to build a closer relations between our countries? Yes, I would be uh, interested in beginning to set the seeds of uh, economic interest uh, within the Iberian Peninsula and diplomatic ties. And uh, when that is complete, we can begin uh, discussing further um, a formal trade agreement as well as uh, any potential goods uh, we would like to. That's good to hear. Out of RP, markets. I need a shared interest with you so I can actually trade with you, which I don't have. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that was, yeah. I was trying to get my, with the whole. Uh, <laughs> I need to actually raise my. I would need to get my naval power projection to go up, which I can't afford right now, so. I can take my interest out of Hungary. Okay. And move it to Iberia. Perfect. That works. I see. I should be able to start exporting sugar to you then. Very good. Um, is there any goods uh, in particular that you are interested in in order to rebuild your economy? Wood is economy? very much in need. Uh, wood as well as furniture. Actually, hold Poor on. thing. You should be able to supply you um, those in small amounts. And as our manufacturing abilities increase, that should um, only rise. That's good to hear. In that case, I'll wait for the mutual interest and I'll begin uh, trading with you then. We can start building that. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. All right, let's go speak with the uh, Philippines. It's been a while. Where is he at? I'm trying to find him. Is he in the Discord? There's. Hello there. Hello. I am Hi, an King. ambassador sent with uh, King Carlos of Spain. I see. Yes, uh, we would like to discuss our current position under the Spanish crown. And we would very much like to discuss your position under the Spanish crown as well. This is perfect. Uh, what would you, uh, did you have something you wish to, to speak about to start off with? Well, we would like to uh, first uh, express our concerns about the sovereign nations that border us. And they threaten our territorial integrity and we would like to be able to deal with them. However, under our current legal contract, we are not able to initiate any uh, foreign place, shall we say. Of course. Um, so, so out of RP, you, you are a... Hold on. You're a protectorate or what are you? Diplomatically, let me look. You are a puppet, so you should actually be able to do autonomous diplomacy. 
Yes, but I, I, I can't. When I try to say open diplomacy or interactions, um, I'm able to conquer space oh, because uh, Spanish to open uh, a subject agreement permits country to st start oh, their own diplomatic. Well, to start off with, um, is, your, is your current army capable of dealing with it? I mean, we could send ours, but we are currently rebuilding after the Civil War, and I'd prefer not to. Uh, if you are able to take them on yourself, I'd be happy to launch that play right now and uh, allow your troops to do yeah, that. Yeah, we are de definitely more than capable of taking down Sulu. Uh, you're talking about uh, Mindanao as well, Davao on your southern... No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, first Sulu, then Mindanao, but first Sulu. We will begin that play for you immediately. I'll send officers and a small detachment of forces, but the majority of the Spanish uh, military uh, will not be sent. But you look as though you are capable of dealing with it. Any other concerns you have for the Spanish crown at this time? Um, nothing here. Just I would like to formally recognize King, uh, king Carlos as the rightful leader of Spain and his king, and that the Philippines is more than willing to remain loyal to the king. That is very good to hear. Uh, we're, we're glad to hear you say that, and I will relay that message to the king. Uh, now, uh, there are a few topics I came here to discuss with you at the bequest of King Carlos himself. Uh, to start off with, we wish to have a talk about the economy of your country. It, it's pretty, I mean, clearly stated that we will continue the policies of Spain in the past and that we will give you large degrees of autonomy in this capacity, although we do not wish to see any competition with more specialized Spanish businesses. So specialized goods, if you need them for construction things are of course fine, but we do not wish to see you developing, for example, a gloss market that would compete with Spain itself. Uh, we are in particular need an interest for uh, further sugar coffee for exports uh, as well as, as dyes for textiles and things like that if you'd be able to uh, to focus on that we're not going to come here and mandate it but those are things that would help the overall economies of both of our countries i understand we are more than willing to base our economy on agrarian output and uh, along with light industry for domestic needs Exactly. That, that is precisely what we were hoping for. That's good to hear. I will be very glad to tell King Carlos of that. Um, in the future, uh, Spain is rebuilding. The Civil War is very costly, and although uh, God's own monarch won, it will take us a little bit of time to rebuild. When we do so, Asia is going to be one of the regions that the king is very interested in. Uh, so, as soon as we are able to rebuild a bit of the Spanish main and get our economy going again, we are very interested in seeing the Philippines grow more powerful in the region as your interests are our interest and likewise that is very good to hear good yeah. anything else so, uh, i can do for you or any messages that can relate to the king no just the current threats that we want to deal with and that's about the biggest problem we currently have very well uh we will start a war with the sulu as soon as this one is done for you as well if that's acceptable so you can bring all of the wayward islands into control uh, that is very acceptable, yes. Good. Thank you for your time, Ambassador. I will take uh, my leave and return home to Spain. Very well. Glory be to the king. Thank you. Right. Good. He's not already revolting, so that's a good sign. Think of the raid, LMG. What's up, man? How's it going? I appreciate the raid. What's up, dude? We had a very rocky start. We, we had multiplayer stability issues for two hours, but we are in the game. How's it going, guys? I'm Hammurabi. I think LMG's raided me a few times. Um... I am a primarily roleplay streamer, Paradox Stuff. This is a game as Carlos Spain. We actually won the Civil War. We're using the VFM mod for our, our mod that we use for these games. And against all the odds, we actually did win as King Carlos. So this is a Carlos Spain. We've diverted from real history already. It is uh, going to be a very interesting game. Let's recruit an admiral as well. Brave Explorer or an Imperious Dockyard Organizer, Traditionalist Commander. We'll go with Ramon Ortiz de la Riva. They would have followed Artsman. On that note, I'm gonna go to the bathroom really quickly. I've been stuck in diplomacy. Be right back. Actually, hold up. We do have construction, right? Yeah. Oh, wait. that'll take us a long time to get that.
Right back. Yeah, I fell in. I drowned. This is a ghost girl hallucinating. Okay, let's see. Hopefully those construction... Why are none of them going? Oh, just going so slow is what it is. Catholic Church is loyal. Uh, loyal, our birth rate went up. That's going to be very big. Oh, the game's just going so slow as well. Okay, let's look on our trade routes again. You're at war. Oh no, this is this is a colonial war. Our our colony's doing this. We're not, we're not sending troops. Why are you banning slavery? No, the, the 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 radicals, the liberal radicals want it. That's not us. This this is the this is the radical trade unionist intelligentsia. They're liberals. We 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 have no interest in them. All right, our debt is just getting out of hand. Our interest makes up half of our deficit, which is a good thing. I may just go for the scaling economy route on this, because I don't know if we can actually get enough income. Oh, that was nice. Or we'll have to implement a grain tax, which is really bad. We'll, we'll, we'll tax tobacco, which will make it less profitable for export, but we kind of have to. And then maybe... Oh, fuck. We'll just lower our government wages. That's really bad, but we have to do it. They already hate us anyway, it's fine. Centralization 2, that helps a little bit. We'll go to Centralization 3 or 4, that may get us out of this. This is really rough. Winning against the Carlos is, is not easy here. <laughs> we were also sent a congratulation letter by, the, to, uh, by Sardinia Piedmont. Okay back into things here we'll put up our education access too which is basically us giving the church more money and funds let's try and pass colonial exploitation again again it just blows my mind that colony does not uh spain does not have access to colonizing denmark's in africa What else we can get here of trade? It's been a while since I was away. We might be able to import some more stuff. Nope. No luxury goods. No porcelain. All these goods are being competed over by everyone. Wood, we can get more from Prussia. That's big. We could probably export things to Prussia now, too. Let's, let's um, export sugar to Prussia. It'll make a demand for it there because it will become one of their luxury uh, foods, I think it's under, that'll be used by their people. So we'll make the demand for it and it'll buy lots of it. Free city of Krakow? Ah, oh, man. Um, 366k. Okay, we'll go to dye workshops. No, we don't have the dyes for it. We could import them, but that won't really do the job. This is going to be rough building up his Spain. I cannot stress that enough. Good, they won their war. Lower clipper costs. We don't need those convoys. Alright, looking back to convoys. More furniture, nope. More tools, nope. They completely how changed how trade works too. It's now just based on the prices purely in your market full stop, which it didn't used to be. Which is a good and a bad thing. It really, it makes you have to adapt how you trade. Cause I got very adjusted to trading with the old system. So it'll take a, a bit to adjust to it. Hey, colonies IRL. Did they really? I know nothing about Danish history, I'm gonna be honest. Almost nothing at all. Let's export some of these. Thank you for the follow, strong octane 13. We actually do need those convoys. Fuck. Can't afford them. I'll go for the cargo ports then. And we're getting a revolution, because they really don't want colonial affairs. Doesn't make any sense, man. 
Special army will not be passed. No way in hell. All right. We are making no reforms then. Could try and bring the industrialists into government. That actually might be good. No, it is not. <laughs> that is not popular at all. Hmm. <laughs> we need atmospheric engines. How far are we? Always. We have more or less stabilized the economy. If I put one of our big... I'll put a tax. I'm trying to think what will impact us the least. We'll do fabric. That'll balance our budget for now. Now let's look into our decrees again. <laughs> Let me think. Where do we have all our people? Mostly in the center. Do education programs too. Small communities of fugitive slaves hidden away in remote areas of Puerto Rico have become targets to local slaveholders fearing that they could assist in potential uprisings. Do we want to attack them or not? We'd attack them. We absolutely would. We need more construction sectors. Um, there's a lot of tough calls to be made right now. We have such an agrarian economy. He is going to make dyes for us. We're going to go into textiles. It's a good transition, good in the middle we can we can jump off of economically. Got to get this other stuff done. God, fucking infrastructure in Valencia. They're not even being used. We'll get rid of a bunch of these. So we incorporated all our territories. We have to incorporate everything? That's why our economy is dead. What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, VFM, man. Come on. What the fuck? I am gonna ask Chris save at it. That is absolutely insane. Base game? I've never done a Civil War in base game, actually, ever. That is absolutely stupid. <laughs> and I just deleted all of our paper facilities, which we're going to need to sustain the bureaucracy we need for this. Please tell me it's at least a short one. Two years.
Mm. All right, let's cut down some of our trade routes and free up some more. Yeah, we have a few we can do here. Look, we can do that. Yeah, we just really have to recover from the Civil War right now. That's all we can do. Fuck, it actually probably would have been better to... to not go Carlos, but I definitely want to do this. How long till end? Uh, 22 minutes. Do we have colonies? No. The game uh, has said that we don't get clo any colonial laws in the beginning of the game. So, and I tried to pass them, but the rural folk don't want to pass them. Which is rough. Turmoil. Because we're incorporating. Oh, man. I don't want to do it, but we will have to build logging camps. We need them so badly. Yeah, it'll take us a good decade, I'd say, to even remotely get anywhere. How many constructions are there? We are rocking to start off with three, I think. Four. We have four to start. And they're already a lot for our economy. We can do lathes. That's actually very big. We don't have any die ourselves, but I think our colonies do. No, we don't start with any dice plantation. Does he have any built yet? That's a very easy way to see. Oh, not at all. Is trading in Vic 3 more like EU4 with nodes? Uh, not really. It's very different than the U4. It's, it's dramatically different than the U4. They're pretty much not comparable. They're actually not buying our sugar. Why is no one wanting to buy our sugar? Because oh, we have a... Oh my god, we're a traditionalist. Ooh. Didn't they have a semi-industrial economy in 30, uh, 36? I thought that they did. 
We may end up just being the permanent sick man of Europe, not gonna lie. I didn't realize how fucked we were economically. Vanilla, it's not quite this bad. VFM really ramps it up a couple levels. What up here, Capital Madrid, the shit of Republicans? You're not scared of them. We should already have had it there. That doesn't automatically move us. I keep thinking this is like Hoi 4 where all this stuff automatically happens. It's not incorporated, so we have to wait. Jesus fuck. What's the best economic system in your opinion? In real life or in the game? In the game, laissez-faire free trade is really, really viable if you're a big country to start off with. It's really good. For, for single player. Single player and multiplayer are very different. Single player, laissez-faire, free trade. Multiplayer, that's a very tough call. Probably protectionism. It, when we do incorporate these states, oh god, it's over a year. We we will be in much better position, but until then, oh man, this is gonna be actually painful. Um, how's the American player doing? Oh, I'm very well. I'm sure. Falonor like pre-plans his strategies out completely, so I'm sure his economy is rolling. Yes. Hmm. We built up the investment pool and used that. We kind of have to just run off the investment pool in the beginning. It's just so inefficient is the problem. And there's all these industrial goods that we need to get. Atmospheric engine, great, but we don't get coal and we don't, we can't make any very quickly. Ooh. Let's see if we can legitimize our government more. We're gonna have to kick someone out. We'll kick out the armed forces. And there's still no laws we can pass. Private groceries, that's not horrible. You still have slavery? We have legacy slavery, which is a little bit different, but yes, more or less. What a man, how's it going? Game is going okay. We won this, the Civil War, which is massive. And then we've just been slow collapsing ever since. This game is gonna be rough until next session. I will probably ask the GC for like a save edit. Like you're allowed to do that. If your country is just getting railed like ours is, we can't ask for like a saving grace edit. I might ask for a little bit of our debt to be bailed out or something, cause until we incorporate these states, it's gonna be ridiculous. Oh, John added all these trait modifiers too. Let me look at these real quick because we need to know what we can actually get certain places. Oh my god, he added ship shipyard throughput in a in a province that doesn't have a border with the ocean. Same one back allow. Do they have uh, port access? I don't think they do. They actually have a port technically. Hmm. 
Yeah, States Incorporated is probably what I'll ask for. All right, let's look through our modifiers. Until until that happens, we I actually really can't do anything to be honest. Bacalao, Latin vineyards. We make a lot of wine production, which makes sense. Real Madrid, urban center throughput. Arsenal de Cartagena, that's fair. Valencia was the home of the Spanish fleet for all of history. So that's where we want all of our shipyards at. That's huge, actually. Barcelona has Dracinas Realis de Barcelona, which gives art output and urban output. Oh, Puerto Rico. Do they get anything? They do. San Juan Bay. Shipyard output there as well. Nice. Hmm. Greetings, this is the ambassador for Prussia. I wonder if he could speak to Spain uh, regarding potential oh. economic ties and... Hello there, oh. this is King Carlos. Out of RP, uh, I have to wait till the save edit. I'm in really bad shape right now because I'm going to ask to get my states reincorporated after the Civil War because half my country is unincorporated Oof. right now. That's rough. Yeah, so I'm just hemorrhaging money and, and economically stagnating until next session. Okay. Yep. <laughs> That's what, what were you here for? Um, I was just wondering if there was any goods I could potentially uh, export to you that you would be in of interest that would help uh, potentially stabilize. Coal would be very useful. I, I we were we would very much like to to start industrializing our economy, but since we are unable to to grow almost at all right now, um, we do know that you have access to many coal mines in Prussia. Is there an excess of coal in your country? Or are you using it all? Um, at the moment, no. We are working on expanding our production capacities, uh, especially in regards to coal and iron. Um, and once those uh, production levels reach um, more stable stockpiles, um, then we will be able to begin exporting those goods to you. I but we see. just wanted to keep in mind um, what type of goods uh, the Spanish market would be interested in going forward. Coal, coal would be a pinnacle concern. If we could rely on Prussia for, for coal imports, we could work on other aspects of our economy. Uh, so that, that would be incredibly useful. I will speak with the economic minister and have him speak with the uh, junkers uh, who are uh, making most of the uh, economic investments uh, around the coals and iron mines. It's good to hear. Anything for you? Uh, we, we are tasking our colonies to begin building up their, their dye plantations as well as uh, coffee, uh, which we can export to you when we get a solid excess of. Yeah, sure. We always have uh, uses for um, dyes, uh, silk in particular. I don't know if your markets have any access. To they silk, they do not, silk. unfortunately. Okay. Um, in that case, uh, things such as dyes and coffee and any, uh, raw materials or, or luxury goods, um, that can be grown within your colonies, because as, uh, the Prussian Kingdom does not hold any overseas colonies and are relying on Dutch and Spanish, uh, raw materials to... We, we will, they're being expanded as quickly as possible. We're going to look into Cuba there and getting more tobacco and things like that and sugar, so we, we will get all that handled. And we also would like Very to notify point. you that we will be expanding upon our, our dye production and shipbuilding as well. So either of those, we're happy to supply fresh or whatever they need. Thank you very much. We'll be sure to keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. I literally just, I can't, I kind of just have to sit here and wait till the end of the game. And because until we get incorporated states, there's not much. Um, we're technically growing, though. Our economy is growing. Are we getting enough logs? Because if we are, I'm going to not make that. No, still massive deficit. We'll make a few of those. It's good to have a certain amount of production of our own. Especially since it's a pinnacle good. Is America friend? Probably not. We're, we're neutral right now. Hey, sitting. I'm, I'm aware. That was the that was the feature we I uh, asked you the other day if you'd seen yet in the game. We uh, there was a trade added to uh, Stockholm for uh, for hastening. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful uh, state modifier for for Sweden. <laughs> what mods are you using? 
What's up? Uh, oh yeah, Carthonis. Uh, we're using the Babylon Roleplay mod. I'll, I'll link it for you if you'd like. It's a mod that uh, the server, server's modding group uh, developed. You find Twitch chat. I'll put it in there. There you are. That is the mod. Uh, if you play it and see any bugs, please let us know because we we do want to fix it. We just got our release out last night. Part of the reason there were so many issues, it was looking like this was more a VFM issue because we've been waiting for them to update their mod for quite a while. Which added some amazing features, to be fair. Like, that is such... A, I think it's the best mod out there for, for Vicky3 right now. It is It is just so nice. <laughs> it makes the map correct. It, it makes things actually historically mostly right in the beginning. It adds so much flavor. It's what adds this whole system now where you can, like... Uh, you can see your heir and your your prime minister if you have them and things like that. It's got a lot of really cool stuff like that. Which we don't have because we're a very autocratic state. There we go. Come on. Get the logging going. We are actually starting to go a lot better. What's up, Lord Lambert? Thank you for the raid, man. Appreciate that, dude. How's it going? How's it going, guys? I'm Hammurabi. I am a Roleplay Paradox streamer. Much like lovely Lambert here as well. He is an amazing Roleplay Paradox streamer as well. Uh, we are currently in a Victoria 3 multiplayer game, which after two hours of rehosting, we actually got to work. Um, we are currently playing Carlos Spain. We managed to win the Civil War at the start of the game. We're using our, our mod we developed, and part of that is the VFM mod, which was developed, where we started a Civil War. We did win as the Carlos. But our economy is pretty much in free fall, and we are very much stagnating and trying to trying to build up our economy now at this point. It's looking pretty rough, but we've got support from Prussia and Austria, which I think will be a problem later on because they are rivals and hate each other. But they are part of the Holy Alliance, which we're going to try and get into ourselves. So I appreciate the rate, man. Does the mod include the added state modifiers you currently add? Yes, it does. So the state modifiers, if you want separately, John developed them. He was actually the Prussian guy who just came and roleplayed with us just now. That's the guy who made all the state modifiers. It was for the mod. I think he made a separate release, though, uh, on the Steam Workshop. I'm also going to make a separate release for the naval uh, overhaul I did when I bug fixed a little bit more, and I'll put that up separately for people who just kind of want to add it to their own playlist for single player. So you don't have to get Babylon roleplay. Because I did overall the naval system. We'll go into that later. I don't want to look at it right now because I can't afford a navy. And that makes me so sad as Spain. So we'll, we'll look into it when I can actually start to build up the Spanish main again. It'll be a bit. We have a long ways to go in the rebuilding process. Was our market access in Valencia? We did deal with that. Good. Okay. Next session will be a lot better. We've, we've got the issues fixed for multiplayer and... The economy will be stabilized, I think, by next session. Marcelo Bonillo from the Intelligentsia has been touring Aragon recently, both gathering testimonies for and propagating the abolitionist cause. Slaveholders in the state view this as an attempt to agitate a violent revolt among slaves and demand Bonillo be expelled from the state at once. We are a very traditionalist, conservative king, upholding the old school values. Uh, so we will expel him. We have legacy slavery, so it's our colonies that still have slavery. We just kind of allow it in order to get cheap goods. Um, cause slavery is, is banned formally in Spain proper, but in the colonies it's not. So we just kind of profit off the system. Nice. Just modifiers just there. Cool. We really need coal. Oh, let's see if we can import any. Russians. No, it's actually he needs more coal. That will not be an option for quite a while. We're gonna have to develop our own coal industry too. Again, I mentioned before, multiplayer trade is very different. In single player, the, all these countries just have like these goods they're not using. And in single player, I'm oh, sorry, in multiplayer, it is so cutthroat for trade. Like if there's an excess of anything for anyone, like every player jumps on that opportunity. So that's why trade competitiveness and things like that are so important. 
Trade price is the defining factor in trade profitability and trade in Vicky 3, but the multiplayer trade competitiveness, which is a, a stat you get from things like tech and from like, you know, um, free trade and things like that, it's really important because it's another factor in trade, basically who gets more goods. And a multiplayer, it's really key because players are way more efficient than AI and every little bit of competitiveness adds up to give you more goods. All right, our colony is gonna fight that war with the Sulu too, so we will uphold our promises to them and allow them to get stronger, which is only gonna be a good thing for us. Ah, uh, we took that state, didn't we? I didn't transfer it to him. Let me, um... I don't think I can start it in the middle of a war, but let's see. Where is it? I think it's this one. Work straight transfer. And then... Ah, we're gonna play in that war. We'll wait till after. Nope. Just a lag. Because we had to annex it for them, so we'll just transfer the Sulu's territories, then we'll transfer those territories to Spain. Uh, I won't make tasting do it to save it, so we'll just do it when this war is done or next session. Your mod's lovely and cloudless, I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for letting me use the mod, Lambert. So it's a very nice mod. Those fucking clouds are so goddamn annoying. <laughs> Does the mod include the... I already read that. Any suggestions for which country I should start as with the mod in order to kick uh, the tires a little bit? Brazil or America are my favorites. I was doing a little bit of a run last night uh, as Brazil. I had a lot of fun with that. I'd say uh, Brazil... Siam's a lot of fun. The mod makes them more interesting too, I believe. Japan would be really good as well. Yeah, Brazil, Siam, or Japan would be my recommendations. They're all really fun playthroughs. Oh, this is such a slog getting the economy off the ground. I, like, the reason I'm also not going and doing Diplo with everyone is until Spain is relevant again, which we aren't, we have no business showing up and starting to make deals with people. We just don't. There's, there's no way we could justify it. We'd be laughed out of any actual courtroom in Europe right now because our country's just in such disarray and disrepair. I like the cloud mods might actually record the for the highest percentage used. It has 19,000 subscribers and 30,000 unique videos. visitors. Nice, man. Hell yeah. Utility mods like that are so needed because Paradox didn't do them themselves. That is a lot, though. I think it's like it is one of the pinnacle mods now that everyone uses just because, you know, no one wants fucking clouds. <laughs> no one wants clouds. No one at all. I'm sure even the PDX devs when they were making it were like, we don't we don't want these clouds, but we're gonna put them in here anyway. What do we need explosives for? Probably military buildings, I'd say. Yeah, and we are at time. All right, it's the end of the game today. Next week, we will not have all these multiplayer issues. We got that issue fixed with the uh, Puerto Rico issue. So we, I think we'll be good next week. So we will end the stream here for the day. Um, I will be streaming again next Sunday in the morning. We'll continue the house tours grand campaign and more Spain uh, Victoria 3 in the afternoon next week. I think it'll be much more interesting because we'll get out of this little slump here and then we'll start to roll. I've got a lot of fun plans now that we're actually going to be the Carlos. So I think it'll be a, it'll be an interesting game. Uh, another thing is I am hosting a RimWorld um game in around two weeks i think i may stream that i've been debating it but I, we're doing a rim world multiplayer game role play multiplayer game of rim world and i think i will probably stream that i'm going to be rping a, a, a depressed doctor so if you'd like to hear me role play a depressed doctor in two weeks in rim world that'll also be starting i think we're going to do that on a friday afternoon so keep an eye out for that let's go see if there's anyone to raid here as well don't see anyone let's see if there's any vic streamers they are a rare breed but they are out there Let's look. Oh god, Twitch, don't make me listen to the homepage. I really don't want to. Victoria 3. There's nothing interesting, I'll just end this stream. Mm. 
No, these look very interesting. We'll just end the stream here then. Uh, a couple other things. I mentioned it before, but I've transitioned. I have my own Discord now. I have a link to my Twitch bio. I think I updated it. Um, I split off from the roleplay server that was originally like my streaming server, you know, where I did streaming, like it was for my channel and stuff. But then it turned into the roleplay server. So I've kind of just, you know, distanced it too because I think it was important to do. So I have a separate server. Uh, I'm going to start doing polls. I'm going to start adding ways to basically get character 